Yes, sir. Yes, yes. That's fine. So, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for introduction by uh, Dr. Mangala Den, madam. Uh, as far as uh, nanotechnology is concerned, uh, there are various branches which are there on this particular slide. Uh, the topmost is the nanotechnology. You have nuclear technology. B nuclear technology may come in next 10 years time in India. Biotechnology is already there by many private universities. Aeronautics has been there in the uh, some of the IITs. Petrochemical has been started by our own MIT Pune. Biomedical engineering is at few places. Optoelectronics, then leather technology. Next to the IIT Chennai, there is a a uh, whole institute for related technology. Then food technologies again uh, will come up. At few places it has come up. And humanitarian, humanitarian engineering, that is uh, probably only in US and may come in India in next 25 years. So nanotechnology uh, branch somehow we should now start. That is my opinion. Uh, in fact, if you, if you go to IIT Bombay, they have a uh, nanotechnology department. Now, uh, there are uh, material related issues, okay, uh, and they have been solved by nanotechnology. Uh, if you see the uh, dust free television screen, uh, then how it is possible? It is because of the nanotechnology or automobile paint that has got nanomaterials because of which it doesn't get cracked, okay. Uh, as the material changes its shape, the paint also gets stretched and uh, changes its shape. Then if you see uh, the insulator surface in uh, electrical uh, engineering, then they don't absorb the moisture. So all these possible, all these things are possible because of the nanotechnology. Uh, it is expected that uh, almost 75% of the, or 70-75% of the man-made items will have use of nanotechnology in it by 2030, not far away maybe just around eight to nine years from now. Uh, so uh, what is possible with nanotechnology? So maybe super insulators, okay? Uh, then maybe germanium control rectifiers. You have silicon control rectifiers. So germanium control rectifiers, you, you know the basic problem of that alpha is equal to 0.5. So that is not possible to change, but it, it could be possible in future because of the nanotechnology. Then compact transformers like electronic chips, that is possible. I mean, today, why electrical machines are not uh, so, uh, I mean, they're so, why so they're uh, so big? Why not small? Because of the muar. If you can, if, uh, if, you, if you see the muar values there, they're generally around 1500, 1800 maximum, which I've heard of. If you can have a muar value, something like 10,000, then your uh, ceiling fan motor will be uh, very small, just like a maybe a, a size of say uh, four or five centimeter diameter and length could be around say six to seven centimeter. But that is not today possible, but in future it is likely to be possible because of the nanomaterials. Then roll TVs, then concept of uh, this uh, combo pack of laptop, mobile, in fact it is already existing. Then motors with uh, uh, any rated speed. Today, uh, issue is like if you want a motor of 300 RPM as a rated speed, then that is not possible. I mean, that becomes a very bulky and costly. So that is a that kind of problem can be solved by using nanomaterials in the magnetic circuits. Then you have flexible uh, photovoltaic cells. Uh, some companies have come up with them. Then nanotechnology, uh, CNT based uh, batteries and supercapacitors or fuel cells or hybrid batteries, those things are quite possible. Then uh, compact motor generators, uh, those are possible. Then you have the uh, smart caps and all that. So there are many fields in which uh, if you can have that kind of uh, uh, systems, I mean very odd combinations could be possible with the help of nanotechnology. Uh, if you wanted to really see some good uh, or in, increase your knowledge about nanotechnology, I would suggest you just see some of the websites of these journals like IEEE transactions. So you can see IEEE has got many transactions and they have taken up one transaction on nanotechnology. So that actually uh, tells you the importance of this. Then you have the Springer 
nano research then swinger nano particle research two journals they have come up elsewhere also has got uh, journal on max uh, nano material asme then teller and francis has got uh, this uh, on green technology which is completely devoted to the nano technology nano technology basically has got combination of various uh, like chemistry physics engineering bio biology uh, that makes up uh, nanotechnology the its basic components are basically materials bioscience and electronics then uh, in uh, various fields of medical a uh, lot of things are actually possible because of the nanotechnology i will not go to details of this slide because that may be a little bit out of scope of electrical engineering uh, if you see uh, nano science or nanotechnology with respect to existing you can say small materials or small uh, maybe atoms which you see around okay this slide is a perfect to understand the things you can see uh, dna on the right side you can see what is its uh, size or on the left hand side you can see the dust particle or ant size okay at the left hand side again on the bottom uh, dna size is given 2 nanometers so you can see uh, we are talking about at a very very small scale level and that can make huge difference in the properties of the material or maybe whatever uh <laughs> Thank you. 